Good morning. Uh, this is Derek Allen, General Counsel of the of AGC Wisconsin. I've been getting a lot of questions, certainly something that's on the horizon. Um, employers, contractors wondering what to do uh, with regards to a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, recording this in mid-December. Vaccine is just starting to get rolled out uh, for certain populations, expected to be widely available by um, late spring. And employees are wondering what are their rights, obligations, um, those sort of things. So uh, hopefully can cover that today, give you the information you need to make a decision on what your company's policy will be. I can see the title page here. I'm not going to sing it, but if you're familiar with Dolly Parton, um, it's probably probably humming along in your head right now. Um, here is my contact information. Uh, certainly happy to walk you through any of this at any time. So if you have specific questions, if you're developing a plan, um, want more information, anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to discuss this with, with anyone as you approach what's, what's probably gonna be a sticky issue for um, employers across the country and, and contractors across the country. Um, roadmap for today is first, just kind of cover the facts and what public opinion is regarding the COVID vaccine at this point. Uh, about what employers' legal rights and responsibilities are, and then get into the practicalities of putting together a plan um, for your company. Start off with uh, recently several vaccines have shown to be over 90% effective in clinical trials. Uh, as I mentioned, those are starting to get rolled out for uh, the populations you might expect, um, frontline workers, uh, vulnerable populations, uh, those sort of people are, are going to be prioritized. Uh, according to government numbers, as of this morning, they expect that 20 million people in the United States will be vaccinated by the end of the year, uh, somewhere between 20 and 40 million per month after that, which means we will have widespread availability if that plan works uh, by late spring. And the idea is that by the end of June, everyone that wants a vaccine for COVID-19, it will be available to them. Public polling on the issue has shown that, uh, depends when it's when the poll is taken, but somewhere between a third and a half of people say they will not agree to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, that number is going down, more people are, are open to it um, with every poll. Uh, but I think it's fair to say regardless of what your policy is, some of your employees are gonna be upset by it because there's some that, that are gonna think that the employers ought to be requiring it. Um, and there's obviously this third to a half, I think um, some of that group wouldn't agree to it, but if it's required by their work or expected by their work, they'll get it. Um, they're, you know, they're kind of on the fence. Um, when they're asked, they say they won't get it, but maybe if it's right in front of them, they will. Um, but I think it's fair to say that, that some percent of, of your employees are going to be very against um, a COVID-19 vaccine, vaccines in general. So it's one of those issues that is someone in your company is, is very likely to be upset no matter what you do. So that we all confront those type of issues, but it's something to be aware of. And as I'll talk about later in the presentation, that's where communication is key. You don't just want to come down and say, no, we're requiring it. No, we're not requiring it. Um, you want to explain your reasons and hopefully that communication um, with the workforce um, helps what is going to be a complicated um, issue that's not going to make everybody happy. So big question, what are the legal rights and responsibilities of, of uh, an employer? And with many things, we an employer has to balance safety with individual rights of employees. In this context, obviously COVID-19 is new. Uh, we're not able to look at how the COVID-17 vaccine went um, because there wasn't one. It, was, it wasn't a big issue. But flu shots um, in some contexts do give us some guidance. Uh, some industries require it. Most do not. Some employers encourage it. Um, but it does help us a little bit to, to understand how this is going to look uh, from a legal perspective. The considerations that are at play. So OSHA. Um, has a general duty clause. You have an obligation as an employer to provide a safe workplace. Um, at this point, and I don't expect this to change, I don't think OSHA is going to require a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, but what they will look at are your general safety policies and your COVID-19 vaccine policy, whether it's not to require it 
whether it's to require it or whether it's strongly to encourage it, are going to be part of that. So you want to make sure that your safety protocols, again, COVID-19 vaccine would be part of it, but certainly not all of it, um, show that you are, are taking that seriously. Uh, second component would be at will employment. Uh, employment. So most employees in the United States are at will employees, which if you've worked in the employment law context, um, probably told clients many times, uh, that means that you can be terminated or disciplined for any reason or no reason at all. Um, it's not quite that simple. We've, there are protections. You can't fire people for um, you know, their race, their religion, those sort of things. But certainly if someone's an at-will employee, that gives the employer uh, quite a bit of, of power and, and in that relationship requiring a COVID-19 vaccine if someone refuses to get it for for a not legally recognized reason uh, that would be grounds for discipline or um, ultimately termination uh, another issue for uh, particularly unionized employers um, are collective bargaining agreements now i doubt that any of them specifically mention covid19 um, but there might be things in there that that change that so rather than an at will employee situation you might have a for cause and then you run into the question someone refuses to get a covid19 vaccine and and that's against that company's positive uh, policy is that a for cause reason um, and and every cba is going to be a little bit different there so that's something you got to keep in mind um, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, plays a role. Some people have medical issues that don't allow them to get maybe any vaccine um, or specifically the COVID-19 vaccine. So if an employee has an issue, um, a, a legitimate health issue that doesn't allow them to get that vaccine, your policy has got to take that into account. Um, there are also religious protections under the Civil Rights Act. Uh, certain religions don't, don't allow for vaccines um, in general, or maybe there's something specific about the COVID-19 uh, so you got to keep that in mind. And then there's going to be a layer of state and local laws. Um, Wisconsin hasn't um, so far leaned one way or another on requiring um, vaccines, but certainly that may change with regards to COVID-19. Um, and then as we know, specifically here in Wisconsin, you've, you've probably noticed that Milwaukee, Dane counties um, tend to be a little more strict than some of the outstate counties. So you might run into a situation where the city of Madison has some rules or the city of Milwaukee has some rules or the counties. Um, so you got to keep an eye on that. So those are all the factors that might weigh into your decision. Um, big question, can employers require the vaccine? Can you mandate it? Uh, most likely, the answer is yes. Um, as I talked about, as the employer, you have an obligation to keep um, and maintain the work site uh, safety. And this vaccine um, and this disease, it's, it's pretty fair argument that people that are vaccinated are, um, that's a way to ensure workplace safety. But, and these are huge buts, these other issues come into play. So under the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, if, if an employee comes to you, let's say you have decided to mandate the vaccine and says, I can't because of so-and-so medical issue very likely that, that that medical issue by the ADA and you have to enter into, um, among, among other things, an interactive process with that person to see you know, what is their medical issue. Um, you, this process goes both ways. You don't have to take the employee's word for it. You can ask for medical uh, documentation, uh, but you really have to get in this process of, is there a job, is there a position that we can put you in that, that wouldn't require the vaccine? Maybe you can work alone um, those sort of things. So that interactive process is extremely important. And at the end of that interactive process, you might come to the conclusion that there's there's a position in the company that that, that person can do um, without getting the vaccine. Um, also mentioned before, religious issues. Um, if someone has a sincerely held religious belief um, that doesn't allow them to get vaccines, uh, there's a decent chance that that has to be respected. Now, the question is, what is a sincerely held belief? Um, and that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one to go to certain employees and say, I believe that you really believe your religion, but I think this person is, you know, just making it up for, for whatever reason. Okay. That's a tough call to make. Um, it's something I personally be involved in. If you were to Google my name and Pastafarian, um, you would see that 
I played a role in making sure that someone can wear a colander on their head in their license picture in Wisconsin. Um, and the reason for that is, for those who aren't familiar, Pastafarianism is, has some, um, I'd say, unorthodox beliefs, but it's hard to put yourself in the position of saying whether someone um, specifically uh, really believes their religion or not. So that can be a tricky one. Um, as I mentioned, CBA issues play a role. The key thing there, and it's something I've done, is reach out to the union. Say, okay, let's 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 assume an employer does require vaccines. Do you believe that that's uh, any CBA issues there? Do you support it? Do you not support it? Do you think it's a violation of the CBA? Um, and, and like most most people in this context, it's kind of wait and see. Um, but the communication is key. If it's, you know, um, if you are, if you do have union employees um, with those union leaders, with your union contacts to see um, if they think your policy is in violation of the CBA or if they support it, that's a good thing to know. Um, final thing to take in mind would be employee pushback. As I mentioned, some percent of your employees are not going to be happy um, with your policy. Um, and if you mandate vaccines and, and, you know, it's just a numbers game. If you have a certain number of employees, a certain number of those employees are going to be um, pushed back against it. The reasons I mentioned before are are somewhat valid, but if someone just flatly says, I don't want to get it, I refuse. Um, that's not enough legally. They're, they're not protected there. Um, if it's a religious reason, if it's an ADA reason, those are legally valid, but simply saying, I don't like vaccines. I did my research and I'm not doing it. Um, that's that's probably not. I mean, now you got the issue of okay, well, what are you going to do about it? But um, from a legal perspective, um, that's not enough. Um, and then there's going to be more guidance to come on this. This is an issue that's confronting um, almost every employer in the United States. It's going to confront schools, um, municipalities, government organizations. So expect more guidance um, to come out on this. And I'll talk about that uh, a little bit more. So. Can you require a vaccine? The answer is most likely yes, but that leads to perhaps the more, more important question, should employers require a vaccine? Um, when you're looking at this issue, things to keep in mind are employee relations. Um, how will your workforce respond to it? Um, owner relations and requirements. You might run into certain owners that either want to see that they want to work with companies that that have a robust uh, vaccine policy um, or they might require it um, so that might be an, a factor to look at mentioned it before but certain counties and municipalities might require a vaccine or um, require uh, contractors and employees to strongly encourage them so that's going to be another factor um, something that employers have worried about is if I do mandate a vaccine, and I, and I think it's fair to say that this vaccine has moved along quicker than others. Um, for other diseases, it's been, you know, a three to five year um, test period. Here, we're, we're looking at about a year or so. That's not to say that it's any less safe, um, but it's something that employers worry about, that if I mandate someone takes it and there are side effects or, or something like that, how much liability uh, do I have? And this is Somewhat of an open question. I think it's a fair one. I think it's, it's something people ought to be worried about. Um, as I've watched others speak on the issue, most are of the opinion that if there is something defective with the vaccine itself, that that's that Pfizer's um, likely where people are going to look. So um, whether that pans out to be the case or not, we'll see. But I I, I tend to agree with that. I think the manufacturer um, in that event is, is probably got the, the target on his back more than um, an individual employer. Um, and another factor is maybe you require the vaccine um, or have different policies on a job by job basis, um, taking into account um, the specific requirements or, or desires of um, the owner. So what should your policy be um, requirement or strongly encouraged um, and that's a tough call that's a tough call I suspect that most employers most contractors as time goes on will probably be 
in the strongly encouraged camp, but not the required camp. Um, I, I think there'll be uh, companies that do it both ways, or there'll be companies in both. Um, but I think strongly encouraged is where most will come down. Then you run into the issue of um, employees, they know what required means and they know what strongly encouraged means. And typically if you strongly encourage something and someone doesn't do it, there's not an or else. It's okay, we, we asked you to and you didn't. And, and that's kind of the end of it, um, which can, can cause some angst um, amongst people who think it should be required. So um, some, so a clever way to phrase that uh, AGC of America did a webinar yesterday, and and I picked this up there. Is how do you how do you balance this requirement versus strongly encourage? And what they suggested, which I think is is pretty smart, is phrase things that we expect our employees will get um, will get vaccinated against COVID nineteen. Uh, it falls a little short of requirement, um, but it does avoid that strongly encouraged, which which people tend to be able to see through. So if you say we expect that. Um, our employees will get vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, you're not, you're, you're a little short of requirement, um, but maybe it, it might work a little better, practically speaking, than, than saying strongly encouraged. Um, regardless of your ultimate decision as a company, and again, I think your, your sort of your three broad categories are we're not gonna require or encourage anybody to do anything on this front. Um, we're gonna strongly encourage employees to get vaccinated or we're gonna require employees to get um, vaccinated. Whatever you do, um, I think you should have a written policy on it. I think that's gonna protect you. It's gonna help with communication with your employees. Um, so I think you ought to have one regardless of what your decision is. Um, First piece of that, because it is complicated, there are many factors, is talk to a professional first. Um, I'm happy to do it if you have um, your own legal counsel, HR, professionals, speak with them because there are aspects of this that are important to cover um, and someone that works with it all day, every day um, is, is just gonna be able to help you out with that sort of thing. Um, what should be in your written policy? One is clear expectations and rationale, okay? Here's what we want you to do. Here's what we would like you to do, and here's why. I think that's very important, um, just not only from a legal perspective, but because your, your employees um, should know that. I think it's gonna help um, smooth over what I talked about. Um, some employees are not gonna be happy with your policy no matter what you do, but I think they're gonna be able to um, accept it, more likely to accept it if they know your rationale. So rather than just say, we require all employees to get vaccinated, you say that, but then you also say, and here's why, because we work with these owners, um, workplace safety, um, you know, all these sort of reasons. You also want to put in your policy that if someone disagrees, what should they do? Um, so if they do have a medical reason they can't, how do they address that with you? If they have a religious reason that they, that they don't believe they can be vaccinated, um, how do they address that with the company? And Let's say they just don't want to. How should that be addressed with the company? So all those things should be laid out um, in your policy. Uh, second part of your policy is the implementation. Now, obviously, if, you, if you're going to be hands off and say, whatever our employees want to do, we, we view this as a personal decision, um, then you probably don't need to, to deal with implementation. But if you're going to be in the strongly encourage or mandate camp, uh, you should think about how you're going to implement that. So maybe you give employees paid time off. You, you get in contact with, with a local provider that can provide the vaccine. And you say, all right, everyone's getting an hour of paid time off, two hours, whatever the time might be to go get the vaccine. Um, maybe you handle it on site. I, I suspect there's going to be a pretty big push from the government to, to get people vaccinated. So it might be possible. Um, depending on your locality to actually have someone come on site and, and let your employees know there's there's going to be nurses or doctors on site um, administering the vaccine on so and so days and we're going to we're going to pay for it we're going to make it easier we're, it's going to be paid time off for you um, lay those things out and i think that's important i think if you are in one of those camps um, you should make it as easy and pos as easy as possible for your employees the numbers show um, that if it's 
if you lead the horse to water, they're, they're, they don't have to drink, but they're more likely to drink. And this, this does bear out with flu shots. I think we can, um, the numbers show that there are employers that, that mandate or strongly encourage flu shots. And then there's those that make it extremely easy as part, whether by having people come in or providing time off, the number of people that actually get it done goes through the roof um, when the employer makes it as easy as possible. And essentially all the person has to do is, it show up um, to work and it'll be available there on a certain day or um, it's scheduled for them and their work pays for it and all those sort of things. So if it is something that you're going to mandate, um, I'd recommend making it as easy as possible for your employees to get it, whether that's um, coordinating for them to go offsite or potentially having it on site yourself. And, and those are things that the practicalities I think will become more clear as, as the vaccine starts to get rolled out. Um, finally, mentioned it before, communication is key. You don't just want to have a one sentence thing um, that goes out to employees that says we're mandating this or we're not. Um, explain your reasons. Uh, the more detailed, the better, and that will insulate you both from a legal perspective and help your employees understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and that that population that's going to be upset with your decision um, hopefully it's it's a little easier to swallow um, if there's communication about about these sorts of things. So in summary, um, start thinking and making decisions about your policy now. Uh, there's not the widespread availability that it's that it's on the front the front door right now, uh, but it's going to be. We know it's coming, um, and sometime this spring, early this summer, um, it's going to be widely available, and you ought to have a policy in place. Um, for what is a foreseeable um, issue. Um, when you do develop your plan, whatever it is, consult a professional. Like I said, I'm available. You might have your own HR um, or, or private attorney. Um, check with them while you're developing your plan. It's, it, it's gonna make sure that it's as solid as possible um, and incorporates, um, takes into account uh, those legal considerations I talked about earlier. Finally, um, understand the legal issues at play. Um, the three, I'd say, government entities that are going to play the biggest role in this are CDC for just specific guidelines on how to handle COVID in general. Um, and then on the employment piece of it, you're going to have the EEOC um, and the Department of Labor. So I, I'm sure that they're going to issue a, um, specific guidance on the COVID-19 vaccine as it becomes more readily available. So keep an eye on them. Their websites are pretty good. They... Um, update things um, pretty regularly. I've actually been somewhat impressed with the speed that they've updated things. And ultimately, th that's who you're going to have an issue with. The law is going to be the EEOC um, or the Department of Labor. So if you're following their guidance, that's going to put you in a, in a good spot for future um, issues. Um, know your workforce. Um, uh, that's key here. They're, it, you know, they're somewhat their views on vaccines and, and you know, you're probably going to have some idea on what that might be based on mask requirements. Um, I think there's going to be some overlap with people that maybe had, were very much for masks or had uh, very much against masks. I, I suspect that th that dynamic will be in play with the vaccine itself as well. So know your workforce, know how you have to communicate with them. Um, I, that, that's really the key. That, that's what this is all about, protecting your workforce, making sure that you are communicating with them um, and they understand where you're coming from. Um, so make sure you know your workforce as you're developing your policy and then communicating about your policy. And finally, I mentioned it a few times, um, I think it's the most important thing, the communication is key. As you're rolling out your policy, uh, make sure you're in contact. If, if you're subject to a CBA, the union officials, to, be anything in your policy that they're with. Um, if you get thumbs up from them, you're, you're in good, you're in better shape. Um, same with your employees. Okay, make sure you're communicating with them. Here's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, if you do decide to encourage or mandate a vaccine, here's what we're doing to make it easy for you to get that. Um, communication is going to be key throughout this process. Um, so that's it. If you have any further questions, please reach out to me again. Um, Derek.Allen at agcwi.org, or my direct line is 608-490-3226.
Thanks.